Good morning and welcome to Jesus Saves Ministries. You can go to our website at www.stg-ct.org and also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel under Shane Gaskins. That's right, our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button so that you can get every video and when you go on the channel, you can see all the videos that have been recorded. Once again, we thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Father, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And Father, we thank you for your precious Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth. We thank you for every hallelujah soul that will hear the word of God around the nation, Father God, this Sunday morning. We thank you, Father God, that your word will not return to you what what will accomplish everything you sent it forth to accomplish. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's always a blessing to come, hallelujah, and minister God's word, hallelujah. But it's so important that you study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needing not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's some powerful word that's going forth this Sunday, but it do you very little good. Hallelujah. I know that's crazy English. If you don't go back and read and study, meditate on God's word day and night, and observe to do all according that is written there in study to show that self approval unto God. Workmen needing not be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God wants to speak to you. And he wants to speak through you. He wants you to go and spread the good news. Praise be to God. And we just thank God for who he is. What he's already done in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for the wars. There's rumors of wars going around. And we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That as you intervene, hallelujah, people will hear. People will receive what the Spirit of God is saying to the body of believers in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for conversion, souls to be saved, and people are coming, hallelujah, to the kingdom all from the north, south, east, and west. We pray for those who are troubled and who are so challenged, and the young boys and girls, young men and women, families, Father God, we lay them on the altar today, and we say, your kingdom come. Your will be done over this situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We want to continue to pray for uh, the individuals uh, in Israel and Hamas. Uh, everybody that does not know Jesus. It's God's will. Watch this. That none should perish. People say, you taking sides? I don't take sides. Only side I'm on is on the Lord's side. Whose side are you on? And it's God's will that none should perish. God so loved the world. Doesn't care what part of the globe it's in and what region it's in. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But there are those who are perishing because they don't believe in him. They don't know him. So we pray, hallelujah, that God would open up their hearts. We pray that God would send, hallelujah, souls to go in and be a witness and we pray that they will receive what the spirit of god is saying in the mighty name of jesus listen god is speaking loud and clear through the power of the holy spirit praise be to god you have to have an ear to hear he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to who the church who's the church the body of christ now a lot, a lot of people are going into the building today and they're in church the physical location, but you are the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And so we have to go, hallelujah, in the highways and the byways. And the word that we've heard, hallelujah, we've got to go and share it. Praise be to God. And we believe that this word that God has given us, hallelujah, through the Holy Scriptures, hallelujah, will bring life. And bring life more abundantly. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We want to look at. It's a material I've been looking at. For the longest. And all, and all of a sudden. I, I, I read it. And I have it all marked up. 
And then I looked at it again. It's called Systematic Theology by Wayne Gudum. And um, it just blessed me. Amen. One of the chapters talked about the word of God. And, you know, that interests me uh, real soon, as soon as I saw it. But it's been years since I read it uh, and began to meditate on some of the things that it was saying. And it just blessed my heart. And I want to share that with you in the name of Jesus. The first chapter is chapter 2. It talks about the word of God. And it says, what are the different forms of the word of God? That was very interesting to know the different forms of the word of God. That's what we want to talk about today. Again, that's by Wayne Goodum, uh, G-R-U-D-E-M, and uh, Systematic Theology. Uh, it starts off by saying, uh, what is meant by the phrase, the word of God? Actually, there are several different meanings taken by this phrase in the Bible. It is helpful to distinguish these different sense clearly at the beginning of this study. Uh, the Word of God, we're going to look at different points of uh, that we want to discuss concerning the Word of God. And the first one is uh, the Word of God as a person, which is Jesus Christ. We want to talk about the Word of God as speech by God. We want to talk about God's Word of personal address. And God's words as speech through human lips. Hallelujah. And then we want to talk about God's word in written form. We call the Bible or the scriptures. Amen. And so uh, as we begin to read, I ask God to open up your heart and understanding. Again, get the scriptures, pull out the scriptures. Hallelujah. Everything that we say and learn has to be geared towards what the scripture says hallelujah not what we think or what we just believe completely it has to be the power of god through the holy spirit speaking to our hearts opening our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the body of believers in the mighty name of jesus christ it says sometimes the bible refers to the son of god as the word of god in revelations 19 and 13. Go to Revelations 19 and 13. John sees the risen Lord Jesus in heaven and listen what he says. The name by which he is called is the word of God. Similarly, in the beginning of John's gospel we read, in the beginning was the word found in John 1 and 1. And the word was with God, and the word was God. It is clear that John is speaking of the Son of God here. Because in verse 14, he says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. This verse in perhaps 1 John 1 and 1, are the only instances where the Bible refers to God the Son as the Word. God the Son as the Word. Or the Word of God. So in this passage is not common. It's not common. But it does indicate that among the members of the Trinity, it is especially God the Son who is are in his person as well as in his word his has the role of communicating the character of God to us and of expressing the will of God for us so again it says God the son as the word or the word of God so this usage is not common but it does indicate that among the members of the Trinity it is especially God the Son, who is his person as well as in his word, has the role of communicating the character of God huh, to us and of expressing the will of God for us. So expressing the way, the word of God to us, amen, communicating the word of God to us, but also expressing the will of God for us. 
And that's why the word of God is so important. Hallelujah. Not only just to read, but hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Role of communicating the character of God to us and expressing the will of God for us. The word of God as speech by God. Write this down. The word of God as speech by God. It says, God decrees. Sometimes God's word takes the form of powerful decrees that causes events to happen or even cause things to come into being. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, Genesis 1 and 3. God even created the animal world by speaking his powerful word. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth, according to their, hallelujah, mm, kind. And it was so. Genesis 1 and 24. Go back and read. Go back and study. Praise be to God. Thus the psalmist can say, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. That's found in Psalms 33 and 6. You've got to go back and read God's word. Don't be a lazy believer. Go back and study. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. The powerful creative word from God are often called God's decrees. A decree of God is a word of God that causes something to happen. These decrees, God include not only the events of the original creation, but also the continuing existing of all things. For Hebrews 1 and 3 tells us that Christ is continually upholding the universe by his word of power. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Praise be to God. Isn't that just isn't that awesome? It just, it's just powerful. I'll read it again. It says, these power creative words from God are often called God's decrees. A decree of God is a word of God that causes something to happen. These decrees of God include not only the events of the original creation, but also the continuing existence of all things. For Hebrews 1 and 3 tells us that Christ is continually upholding the universe by his word of power. Give God praise. Give God praise. We thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah too. God's word of personal address. God sometimes communicates with people on earth by speaking directly to them. These can be called instances of God's word of personal address. Examples are found throughout scripture. At the very beginning of creation, God speaks to Adam. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree mm, of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Genesis 2, 16 through 17. I have time to go back there. Time is short. Read it. Go back and read it. After the sin of Adam and Eve, God still comes and speaks directly and personally to them in the words of the curse. Genesis 3, 16 through 19. It says another prominent example of God's direct personal address to people on earth is found in the giving of the Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. It's found in Exodus 21 through 3. In the New Testament, at Jesus' baptism, God the Father spoke with a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Matthews 3 and 17. In these and several other instances where God speaks or spoke words of personal address to individual people, it was clear to the hearer 
that these were the actual words of God. Again, the actual word of God. They are also human words in that they are spoken in ordinary human language. That is um, immediately understandable. The fact that these words are spoken in human language does not limit their divine character or authority. Hear me out. In any way, they are still entirely the words of God spoken by the voice of God himself. Some theologians have argued that since human language is always in some sense imperfect, any message that God addresses to us in human language must also be limited in its authority and truthfulness. But these passages and many others are th that record instances of God's words or personal addresses to individual gives no indication of any limitation of the authority or truthfulness of God's word. Praise be to God when they are spoken in human language. Hmm? Quite the contrary is true. For the words always place an absolute obligation upon the hearers to believe them and to obey them fully. I want to read that again. Hallelujah. It says, quite the contrary is true. For the word always places the absolute obligation upon the hearer to obey them. Hallelujah. And believe them fully. To disbelieve or disobey any part of them is to disbelieve or disobey God himself. Anybody in the house? It says, the next part, the, the, the part that I want you, as we begin to close, is I want you to begin to meditate on these things, meditate on God, go back to the scripture, because I didn't have time to go over every scripture, but you do. Go back and read the scripture, because if anything I say or somebody has written does not back up or back can be backed up by the scriptures, we don't need to receive it. But he says, as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. All right, uh, three, uh, it says, God's word as speech to human lips. Frequently in scripture, God raises up prophets to whom he speaks. Once again, it is evident that although these are human words spoken in ordinary human language, by ordinary human beings, the authority and truthfulness of these words is in no way diminished. They are still completely God's words as well. In Deuteronomy 18, God says to Moses, you need to go back and read it and study it and meditate and go back to the scriptures, open up your Bibles, praise be to God, go to the Holy Scriptures. Listen what uh, God says the most. He says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not give heed to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of himself. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speak in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. That's found in Deuteronomy 18, 18 through 20. Please go back and read it. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to give you a few scriptures. I'm out of time. I'm going to give you some scriptures for you to go back and read. No lazy Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. We labor over God's word. Amen. God's word is fruitful because we labor over it and it takes root in our heart and it grows and we share the good news. Praise be to God. Listen, God made a similar uh, a statement in Jeremiah. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Write this down quickly. Uh, you know, just listen to it on the tape again. Uh, it says, uh, Jeremiah 1 through 9. God tells Jeremiah, 
whatever I command you, you shall speak. All right, Jeremiah 1 and 7. See also Exodus 4 and 12, Numbers 22 and 38. 1 Samuel 15 and 3, 18, 23. 1 Kings 20, 36. 2 Chronicles 20, 20. 2 Chronicles 20, 25. 25, 15 through 16, excuse me. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30, 12 through 14. Jeremiah 6, 10 through 20. Come on, you got to work. This is labor. You labor over God's word. Amen. Jeremiah 36, uh, 29 through 31. Hallelujah. It says, anyone who claimed to be speaking for the Lord, but who had not received a message from him was severely punished. And you can find this in Exodus, uh, Ezekiel 13 and 1 through 7, Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. Mm hmm it says, thus God's words spoken through human lips were considered to be just as authoritative, get this, and just as true as God's word of personal address. There was no diminishing of the authority of these words when they were spoken through human lips. Anybody in the house? The disbelieve, mm, to disbelieve or disobey any of them was to disbelieve or disobey God himself. This is point four. God's word is written, hallelujah, in written form. All right. We read God's word as a person. Jesus Christ, we read, B, the word of God as speech by God. Uh, we read uh, God's word of personal address. Uh, three, we read God's word as speech to human lips. And now four is God's word is written form, the Bible or the scriptures. It says, in addition to God's word, of decree, God's words, a personal address, and God's words spoken through the lips of human beings, we also find in scripture several instances where God's word were put in written form. The first of these is found in the narrative of the giving of the two tablets of stone on which were written the Ten Commandments. And he gave to Moses mm -hmm, uh, when he had made an end of speaking with him upon Mount Sinai. The two tablets of the testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God, found in Exodus 31 and 18. And the tablets were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of who? God. Graven upon the tablets, Exodus 32 and 16, 34 and 1, uh, and uh, verse 28. Further writings was done by Moses. Listen at this. And Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, at the end of every seven years, you shall read this law before all the Israel, before all of Israel in their hearing, that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, and be careful to do all the words of the law. And their children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. Listen, and their children, come on now. We don't want to even start talking about how we're supposed to teach our children, train a child up in the way they should go when they only will not depart. Train them up in where and what? A good education? Okay, cool. 
all the other things, the amenity of this temporal world, good. But what about eternal life? Where will you, and how do you teach them, hallelujah, to spend eternity in heaven? He says, upon my, this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because the church never, as we thank God, we are the body of Christ. And we, 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 we preach it generation to generation to generation. Amen. It says, God, and be careful to do all the words of the law. All God's words. And that their children, you think this just applied to uh, Moses? No. Who have not known it may hear your children may not know this it's just not talking about your children any child any 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 young person that you can minister the word of god especially your own hallelujah it says have known it may hear and learn of learn to fear the lord your god reverence him praise be to god this found in deuteronomy 31 9 through 13. it says this book which moses wrote was then deposited by the side of the Ark of the Covenant. And when Moses had finished writing the words of this law in a book, huh, to the very end, Moses commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He says, take this book of the law and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God that it may be there for a witness against you. Deuteronomy 31, verses 24 through 26. It says, further additions were made to this book of God's word. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. Joshua 24 and 26. Go back and read. Time is up. Go back and study. God commanded Moses or Isaiah, mm, and now, watch this, and now go write it before them on a tablet and inscribe it in a book that it may be for the time to come as a witness, watch this, circle this word, forever. This is found in Isaiah 30. And eight, hallelujah. Once again, God said to Jeremiah, write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. Jeremiah 30, verse 2. You need to go back and read this. Go back and study this. Bless someone. Hallelujah. Write these scriptures down. Hallelujah. We're not going to rush through here. Hallelujah. We write this down. Jeremiah 36, 2 through 4. Jeremiah 27 through 31. Jeremiah 51 and 60. It says, in the New Testament, Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit would bring to their remembrance the words which he, Jesus had spoken. That's found in John 14 and 26 and John 16, 12 through 13. Paul can say, that the very words he writes to the Corinthians are a command of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13, and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 2. Once again, it must be noted that these words are still considered to be God's own words. Even though they are written down mostly by human beings and always in human language, still they are absolutely authoritative and absolutely true. To obey them or disobey them is a, a serious sin and brings judgment from truth and bring judgment from truth to obey them or disobey them is a serious sin and bring judgment from God. To obey them or disobey them is a serious sin and bring judgment from God. Write this down, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. Jeremiah 36, verse 29 through 31.